Thank you for joining us. This is Health Your Own Way Podcast, and I'm your host, Mo Atkins. Welcome to another episode. Today, we're going to be talking about how self-esteem can kill your potential for greatness. My guest speaker is Alethea. Yes. She's a registered psychotherapist and mental wellness advocate. And I really want to have this conversation with somebody that had that background because um, a lot of times you hear from like life coaches, but to have someone that has the background of um, you know, um, psychotherapists and mental health um, advocate itself, I think is, would be a great insight. So I want to say thank you for being part of this platform. And how are you doing today? I'm doing great. And I want to say thanks, Mo, for having me on your show today. Great. And I think for a lot of people, we talk about self-esteem, all right? Yeah. And I and in this specific conversation, we're going to be talking about low self-esteem, right? So I think in your own words, I think, I guess my question to you in your own words, why ha- does having a low self-esteem, I guess, let's step back. Um, I think we all have challenges um, when it comes to self-esteem. I think a lot of people don't realize that or maybe they're hiding it, Right. In your own words, why should we look in investing on how to improve our, our self-esteem to make sure that we are, you know, fulfilling our potentials? Oh, great. Um, that's a great question, Mo. Uh, the first thing I want to just redefine uh, for people what actually is self-esteem. And self-esteem is described in a lot of, you know, textbooks as your overall sense of your personal well-being, your sense of self, and how you overall feel about yourself. And whether that be your beliefs, your emotions, your feelings, your thoughts, everything that um, kind of encompasses who you are and gives you a sense of pride is your self-esteem. Now, I didn't know this, but I'm going to expand on this a bit because we always see self-esteem as one thing, which is how you feel about yourself. But there's three different types of self-esteem. There's a high self-esteem, there's, you know, your regular sense of self, and then there's low self-esteem. And a lot of people do see people with high self-esteem, you know, they really have a great ego, we call it pride, they're very strong in who they are and their identity and their sense of self. And some people might see it as an overinflated sense of ego, which to me um, is not necessarily true. It's just that you really have that confidence in your own ability And based on your behavior and your actions and things that you say, you're able to demonstrate and follow through by some type of visual evidence that you are, you know, as great as you say that you are. (laughs) Then you have, you know, the everyday um, esteem where people just really feel happy about themselves and their situations that they're in. And based on, you know, that... Uh, reflection of who they see in the mirror, they're quite satisfied. And, you know, they have the ability to make the changes and adjust themselves accordingly if they need to. And they're open to feedback, and they're able to uh, make those changes. Then you have low self-esteem. And low self-esteem isn't by anyone's um, design. Sometimes there's just things that happen to us along our development in life whether it be something that somebody could have said to you or something that you heard, or maybe you were around the influence of other people and you started to really doubt yourself. And based on those doubts and um, not having the validation, whether it be from somebody verbally or just for your own personal belief system that you feel that you just do not add up or measure up to others, then we would categorize that as someone is having a low sense of self, which means, you know, they don't see themselves in a high esteem because that's what self-esteem is. So they don't see themselves as having as equal value as who they see around them or how they feel about themselves. Fair enough. And I appreciate that distinction. I think with that said, um, then 
if those are, if that's what the definition of self-esteem is in different levels are, why is it important for people to be self-aware of where they are and invest in improving or being more cautious of how they come across? Well, I think that's a great point because I don't think people realize things are happening to them until they're, uh, they're, they're aware. Okay. And I think once you have that self-actualization that there is something that you really need to change, then we go into the steps of creating the process of getting the information that we need to make those changes. So, um, for example, Mo, we were talking about low self-esteem. So it's usually based on an event. It could be something that we witnessed in our childhood or something that somebody could have said to us that could have made us feel that we just didn't measure up or we just didn't add up to what was going on in our environment. Also, it could be based on a traumatic event. Like I had said, um, something could have really happened to the person and it really shook their core and their sense of self. So they started questioning themselves, which made them have a lot of self-doubt. So their opinion about who they were was based on what was said around them or an action that caused them to have some doubt about themselves. Also through childhood, if we're not validated in certain ways, not only about our physical looks, but it can only just be about somebody reinforcing or validating your presence or reinforcing and validating when you did something well, or if you tried hard, or if you put in an effort. Sometimes if we're not getting that validation, that makes us also feel um, that there's something different. So when we start to have those feelings, of self-doubt and they are confirmed through the evidence of how we socialize and we interact with people, then we start to devalue our presence and our sense of self. And, you know, this is a concern that I have and I talk to a lot of people that I counsel in my practice about it um, in terms of looking back and forming the pattern. Okay. And what we do is we look back and we try to find those times where there are times in your life when you didn't feel validated, when you didn't feel valued, when you had made a statement or you had said something and you weren't heard. Because those small pieces do lead up to chipping away a bit of our armor that we have to protect ourselves when we're not feeling that great or when we're in situations where people don't make us feel that great. And sometimes those little things start chipping away to the point where we're turning around and we're like, oh my gosh, like how did I get into this situation? I'm not feeling of value. I don't feel worthy. I don't feel validated. I don't feel anybody cares. I don't feel like everything I do adds up or matches up. And then when we start delineating and chipping away at those little things, those thoughts in our mind, sometimes we start believing that those things are true. And when we start believing that those things are true, which is based on what somebody said, what other people view us, how we respond and react to situations, if we hadn't felt any sense of accomplishment or felt any sense of validation at those times, then it does chip away at who we are and a little bit of our sense of self. And I mean, people have asked me, you know, in my time, have I ever felt or have been in a situation where, I, you know, my armor was chipped a little bit and I just was in a situation where I, I didn't feel good about myself. And I said, absolutely. This is a normal stage of development that we go through. And if we were to look back and just think about those times in our life when we, we had a little bit of our armor chipped away, um, we can look at those clear stages in our life when these things have happened, right? Like I think about the first day I went to school <laughs> and my mom said, I hid for the whole day. I didn't even want to come out and engage or interact. But I felt hurt. And now that I think about it, I said to my mom, like, how could you leave me with strangers? I see. <laughs> that did a little bit to my self-esteem. 
you know, because we're being separated from our comfort um, and things that we know. And then also when we're going into our adolescence, right, where our bodies are changing, we're looking at all our girlfriends. Sometimes some of us are more developed than others. And then we start thinking, oh, is there something wrong with me? I see that what you chips mean. away at your armor, right? And then when you're getting into relationships and maybe things don't work out, your first job. It, it affects you in a different way. Yeah. And it, yeah, and I appreciate Absolutely. that. Absolutely. And I think, you know, a lot of people are watching and they're like, okay, so we, under, so I understand that there's different levels of um, self-esteem or low, um, high, low or self-awareness itself. Right. But the ones that are, cha- are facing challenges and they can't overcome that low, low self-esteem that prevents them from, you know, having that faith in self in themselves that they can go to the next level that, you know, that they can do stuff. Right. Like I know that, you know, we mentioned earlier that you're psychotherapist and you know you're a mental wellness advocate how does somebody like you can assist somebody that may be listening or watching that are struggling with this kind of process well great question well when people are struggling with their sense of self I try to look at what were those messages that were passed on that made you start limiting your beliefs about yourself okay and when we start looking was it in your childhood Was it your parents that said something? Was it your first day at school? Was it your interaction with your peers? I want to let people know that this is a normal stage of development that young women go through when they stop talking to you and they say they don't want to be your friend. I want people to understand that those times are traumatic for other people because they don't understand the normal relationship process of, you know, some people come into your life, some people don't. So when we're not understanding how things work in stages, then we're starting to internalize ourselves and start to think, well, is there something wrong with me? And I just want people to stop there and to start thinking, well, if you're having some of these deficits, then let's start to look at those areas. And what is it that they are saying or doing that's chipping away at your armor? Because we have to start to realize that the actions and the words of other people do affect you. However, it's up to you how you react to the situation. Because are you saying that it's true? Okay. And that's the validating part. And then when you start to look through and people are making statements that might be negative, we need to find out where's the evidence for us. Is there some validation or some truth? Why are people saying the same thing in the same area? If that is not validated, then we need to start looking within and start asking ourselves some questions about why is it that what other people are saying is affecting us emotionally. I like the way you said that. Go ahead. Sorry. And the second thing is we have to write these statements out. What are those statements that are causing you to think negatively to the point where you are believing it? And let's write those statements out. And then I start to challenge that thinking. And I ask my clients, like, when you have this negative thought, when was the last time you had those thoughts? And when you've had those thoughts, um, what was happening at the time? Because sometimes we like to associate certain types of situations and it becomes an imprint in our mind. And then we also believe that. So sometimes our mind can really trick us into believing things that aren't true. So I need to go through those challenging thoughts and those statements. And then we look for the evidence. And then if there is no evidence to um, support the thought, then we discard the thought because then you're wasting a lot of energy on the negative aspects when we could be focused on something a little bit more. I see what you're saying. Cause a lot of people, it's more the way I understood and please correct me if I'm wrong is, you know, first you're addressing 
you know, is there any truth in respects to what somebody's saying? Okay. If then there's no truth in that respect, then what is triggering you to react and, and, and to make you believe what they're saying? Because then there's some underlying issues in respects. It could be history or tra- trauma or stuff like that. Absolutely. Once you identify if it is trauma or stuff, you address that trauma itself to rectify so you can have a better viewpoint and not take whatever others' opinions of you as reality, even if those if what they're saying to you is factual, in factual, no, not factual, sorry, not factual. So I understood that. And I think, you know, that makes a lot of sense. And I like the way you broke it down because it's more like, you know, step by step, we determine and allow somebody to go through a process to see, okay, you know what, follow that process and complete it out. Mm-hmm. If any, if anybody was, like, I think a lot of people do need it. And um, I think a lot of people lack low self-esteem, some a little too high for their own good out there. <laughs> some people a little too high for your own good. I think with that said, um, what's the best platform to reach out? Like, do you have a website? Like, you know, how can somebody reach out to you if they want to? Because I like the way your process is going. You know, how would they be able to go through that process with you? Yes. And that's the thing. I think a lot of us don't want to sit with ourselves and actually go through the process. And, you know, that's one thing that I really pride myself on is really going through the challenge um, with the individual and just ensuring that we really get down to what it really is that's you know, stopping you from feeling great about yourself. And, and for the people yes. with a high self-esteem, I don't want you to say that we're all on you. Because oh, I, I think say it's that. great that you have this high inflated sense of self, you know, because when you're in sports or when you're... Um, oh, that's different. No, 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 that's different. Positions. You have self-confidence in yourself. No, no, no. You know what I mean? No, that's different. <laughs> yes. Know, when you think you're too big and you want to post them, that's what, for the people that think they're too big, that have to put somebody else down. That's what I'm talking about. Not the ones that walk around going, no, I know I can do that. That I'm one of those people that can, I have self-confidence yes. and point that. I look for those people. Yo, yes. I can go and I'll come and I'm like, if you have something to say, go to the back seat. Nobody cares what you're saying. <laughs> Nobody cares. But I'm not one of the ones that need to literally put somebody down because they think they're better than that person. That's yeah. what I'm talking about. Yeah. So, well, that's just, just, just very clear distinction. That's like, okay. if you got great, yeah, I just want to make sure that was clear. Yeah, and that's fair. I really appreciate that. And I'm glad that you're so in tune with the differences and you know very clearly what to see, right, and what to observe. So um, for the people that are having some challenges, you know, I want them to start looking at what you do have. Because sometimes when we're focused on the lack, we're not looking at the, the, the things that are going well in our life. So let's start writing down, what are you grateful for? And that's the first thing I look at when we start focusing on the lack. Let's start looking at our abundance and what we do have in our life that does give us joy. So I I say, let's look at our gratitude and let's start giving thanks that, you know, we're opening our eyes, we're we're taking a breath. Um, You have the ability to express yourself. Um, You know, you're able-bodied. Like these are the things that sometimes we don't even take Um, for granted because we're so busy being caught up in our thoughts. So I like to look at our environment and see what is it around you that, you know, you can be thankful that you're able to see and be in that presence. So that grounds people, you know? I I think, you know, a lot of people, I I like the way that you floated, but let's say somebody can't do them, like they're listening, they want more, they want direction. So how can they reach out to you? What platform works best to reach out to you? Well, they can reach me on my website, um, www.caconsultants.org. I do a lot of individual work and I do offer a course module if they Mm -hmm. really need to dig in and they want to find out more about how to live a life of purpose and balance, then they can definitely connect with me and we can work through um, some of those barriers and those limiting beliefs. I I like to set goals because I find that once we are measuring and we're realistic about what it is that we can achieve, then we can create those steps so that you can achieve that that success. And I think it's very important that, you know, this piece of who we are really gets worked on because we're facing a lot of uncertain times. And it seems like that's really wrecking a havoc 
on our sense of self. And people are really looking to find out, you know, am I doing and I am I fulfilling um, my purpose? And right. one thing is, if you're not feeling good about yourself, then it makes you feel like you're always going to be in that place. And I just want people to know that yesterday was different than today. So there always will be change. If you need that help, then reach out to me and then I can definitely help you work through so you can see a life of more success. That was well put. Great ending. Great ending. I think, you know, the reason why I say that is a lot of people don't realize that. I think what, I'm, what I mean by it is like the whole pandemic, you know, a lot of people lost their self. Um, and I've lost myself as well because I my different different life my life is different mm-hmm. than what I remember last year. I know it's gonna be different going forward. So that part of me that was existed before is gone, mm-hmm. right? So a lot of people that have lost jobs had to pivot from a different. Some people may have found themselves, right? I'm not saying it's just there's a different part of you that kind of died a bit mm-hmm. last year compared to this year. And I think this conversation it's a little bigger than self esteem. I think it's just self yourself for lack of better choice where you, who you are is a self like who you're being your self being yeah. yeah so absolutely i think you know anybody that wants a little more to go deep into this i highly suggest that you reach out to my guest today or if you are not able to reach out to her, just speak to somebody work on those steps that she mentioned mm-hmm. and before we let you go is there anything that you feel like you want to add or want to say to our guests or speak sorry audience today Sure. I just want to recap and I just want them to know that you are worthy. You are loved. You are cared for. I do care. Reach out to me. I can help you get through this. We are all facing uncertainty right now, but we have to look within. Find your five grounding techniques, your senses, your sight, your smell, your touch, your taste. Look within and pay attention to what is around you. We're here to help you. I don't want you to feel alone. I like that. Thank you. And this was very enlightening. I appreciate the conversation. I like the way you, you phrased it. I really, what I really took from this conversation was the fact that, you know, when someone says something to you, you know, is there truth to it? Truth to it. Then if there is no truth to it, then what's it affecting you? Like there was different processes and that was really good. And I appreciate and anybody out there that's even, if you're uncomfortable talking to somebody, try those steps to see if that will help mm-hmm. you long-term. So Yes. And when I did the validations at the end, those are affirmations. Mm-hmm. And that's another thing that people need to start repeating to themselves daily and okay. look in the mirror. You have to start looking at yourself. And this is the first step to self-actualization go within in order to find out who you are i appreciate that and thank you for being on the show today thank you so much mo it's a pleasure connecting with you as usual likewise we're glad to have you join us don't forget to subscribe leave a comment show it anyone that needs to be empowered and inspired and don't forget to join us next week for the next episode of health your way podcast have a good day you guys